My friend Judith Tindler at MIT says that if you can describe a problem very carefully, the solution will be obvious. I don't necessarily go this far, but a careful description of a water vending system will certainly give you important insights into solutions. In this lecture, I'm going to show you how to describe a water vending system using a diagnostic tool called a money and water flow diagram. This figure will help you understand what is really happening in, in, in an informal water market. I will illustrate how you can create this diagram using data you can collect from water vendors, households, and observations from water sources. Here's an example of a money and water flow diagram for Anitsha, Nigeria in 1987 during the dry season. Onitsha is one of the largest market towns in West Africa. It is located on the banks of the Niger River in Anambra State. In 1987, it had a population of about 700,000 people. On the left-hand side of this diagram are the main water sources that people in Onitsha used, private boreholes, the public water supply system, shallow wells and streams, and rainwater. On the right-hand side are the households. The arrows going from the left to right show the amount of water moving along different pathways from the sources to the households. The arrows pointing from the right to the left show the amounts of money being paid for this water by purchasers. If you look closely at the amounts of money and water moving along the pathways at the top of the figure, you can see that most of the population of Onitsha was being served by the water vending system. In the dry season, tanker trucks picked up about 3 million gallons per day at a couple of hundred private boreholes scattered throughout the city. They sold about 1 million gallons per day directly to households. They sold about 0.3 million gallons per day to businesses. But tanker truck vendors sold the majority of their water, 1.7 million gallons per day, to small retail vendors, who then resold most of this water on to other households. In contrast, the public water utility was only selling about half this amount, 1.5 million gallons per day. And the public utility was receiving almost no money for the water it sold. Of course, when we came to Anitsha, no one gave us this money water flow diagram to help us understand the water vending system. We had to collect the data to create it ourselves. Next, I'm going to show you some photographs of Onitsha and describe how we created these money water flow diagrams. When we first arrived in Onitsha, the first thing we noticed were the metal tanks for storing water. They were everywhere, available for sale in places like this in all different sizes. They were not cheap. They cost a few hundred dollars U.S. each. Sometimes house houses had their tanks on the street in front of their houses. Houses like this were often plumbed and had water-sealed toilets inside, but there was often no connection to the piped network. So tanker trucks would fill these tanks, and people would walk outside to the tanks to collect water in buckets to carry upstairs to flush their toilets. There were also tanks on the sides of houses, or in back. Notice that the tank on the right in this photograph has a sign, Water for Sale. So this is a retail vendor. Here you see more tanks in the back of apartment blocks. Some households share a tank with neighbors, but many households had one or more storage tanks of their own. This slide shows a construction site with water tanks. We often don't think about it, that wa but water can be an important cost of housing when contractors have to mix cement and concrete with water purchased from vendors. In Port-au-Prince, Haiti, Simon Foss has estimated that in some cases, 10 to 20 percent of housing costs for the poor can be for vended water used in construction. So water is not only embedded in cereal crops in the form of virtual water, but also in housing. Here are more storage tanks at the back of houses, and more storage tanks in interior courtyards of apartment blocks. This is one of our enumerators. We conducted a few hundred interviews with households scattered throughout the city to learn more about the water vending system from their perspective, how much water they purchased, and the prices they paid to different types of vendors. Here's one of the fleet of tanker trucks operating in Onitsha. We paid the drivers of a couple dozen trucks to let our numerators ride with them on their routes. 
the enumerators recorded the time, amount, and the price of all the water sold by the tanker trucks and the number of times they filled up at private boreholes. Here's another one of the tanker trucks. As you can see, many were in very poor condition. Here's a picture of tanker trucks arriving at a borehole to fill up. We decided to put observers at a sample of the private boreholes and record how many tankers filled up during a day. But in fact, we discovered that there were observers with logbooks already at the boreholes recording the number of times each tanker truck filled up. Can you think why they were there? Actually, there was an owner's association of tanker trucks. The observers at the boreholes were there working for the owner's association. The owners needed to be sure that the tanker truck drivers were not selling water on the side and reporting to the owners that they made fewer trips. I tried to just pay the owners association to copy the, their record books from the boreholes. The owners association was open to negotiation, but we never could agree on a final price. If I recall, the negotiation stalled when the owners refused to accept an offer lower than 25,000 US dollars. This is a water tanker truck that actually worked for the public utility. We found it filling up at a nearby stream. Some individuals also came to boreholes and collected water directly to carry home, as you can see in this photograph. In our interviews, we found that households were spending money collecting water from their neighbors, from boreholes, and from retail vendors. They were also spending money on small containers, such as shown in this photograph. There was a large slum area in Onitsha where the tanker trucks could not easily get into because of the poor roads. One of the roads into the slum area is shown in this photograph. Here people paid even more for water because they had to buy smaller quantities. Here you can see the conditions of the roads in this slum and simple rainwater collection systems in the slum were common, such as you see in this photograph. Because tanker truck vendors couldn't get into the slum, this opened a window of opportunity for bicycle vendors. Here's a photograph here of a bicycle vendor in the slum. And there were also small distributing vendors carrying water containers on poles. We also found a private borehole in the center of this slum selling water to households by the bucket. The sign on the right says no fighting of any type by order of the proprietor. We also extended our study of water vending into the rural areas around Onitsha. Housing and water conditions in the rural areas were much poor, as you can see in this photograph. Many households collected rainwater in clay jars and hand-dug tanks in the ground. In this photograph, you see one of the hand-dug tanks. In this next photograph, you see some of the jars that are used for collecting rainwater. Here's another picture of the clay pots used for collecting rainwater. In the rural areas, there were old efforts at spring protection and simple pipe systems that had broken down and were no longer used. And this created an opportunity for the water vendors. We found tanker trucks delivering water in the rural areas. This is a middle class house in a rural area with a metal storage tank. Here it is being used to collect rainwater, but in the dry season, tanker trucks sell water to households like this. Here's another example, the large metal storage tank in a rural household that vendors would fill. And here's a storage tank being used by a retail vendor in a rural area. There are more details in the paper on your reading list about the results of this Onitsha study, our data collection activities, and how we created these money water flow diagrams, one for the dry season and one for the rainy season. Elsewhere, we've created similar diagrams to show flows of money and excrement through a city. To wrap up, let's look at the money flow diagram for Onitsha again. Almost all of the money flows for water in Onitsha were in the informal water vending market. 
In fact, the public water utility was not really a serious player from a financial perspective. During the dry season, the private water vending system collected about 24 times as much revenue as the public utility. I undertook this study in a niche for the World Bank, which was considering making a loan to the water utility. But before you intervene in a niche to improve water supply conditions, you'd better know that there's an informal water market in town and how the water vendors, vendors may respond to an intervention. One way they might respond is to use their financial muscle to bribe government officials to slow down a new project. In the next video, we're going to look in more detail at corruption issues in the water and sanitation sector.